G'day guys, Teagues at SA Skydiving. We're just gonna run through some of the points to consider when first jumping a new canopy or any new canopy of any sort, whether it's a mates or a new one that you've just bought uh, or downsized. Um, so we're just gonna run through Zeb, who's got a brand new rig he's gonna jump today. Woo, how yeah. exciting. Um, cool, so the first one is uh, making sure that your rig is good to jump. Does it have a compatibility form? Has it been signed off? Is the reserve in date? All that kind of stuff. Um, and having a gear check um, as per normal with any rig, all right? Especially if it's a new rig, uh, make sure it's had a good um, check over and good to go. Secondly, the weather, um, set yourself up for success. Uh, the less things you have to think about when we're changing anything in skydiving, the better, all right? So try and change one thing at a time. Today we're changing a canopy, so we'll try and have good weather conditions we don't have to think about. My personal rule that I give myself is a minimum eight knots um, to downsize, all right? In near wind, things can feel a little bit quicker. All right, so having a little bit of wind to slow us down is nice. Perfect conditions today, so let's go for it. Number three, do a dedicated canopy jump. All right, so just give yourself a solo. You can go out there, um, open a little bit higher. Um, if you're opening really high, make sure you let your DZO and your pilot know. Um, but I'd recommend about 6,000 feet. Give yourself plenty of time under this canopy to get to know it. Cool. Um, really good one to let the other people on the plane know as well that you're going to be opening a little bit higher so they're aware. Uh, number four, do your checks as per normal. All right, a couple of flares, left turn and right turn. Then we're going to learn a little bit more about this new canopy. All right, so say hello to it. It's a beautiful thing above your head. It's going to be your best friend for however long. All right, the first thing we're going to check is the brake line lengths. All right, so once you release your toggles, put your hands up on full drive. And what you'll see is you're going to have our parachute like so, flying in this direction. All right, and from our toggles, all of our lines from our risers are gonna go up to four attachment points on the canopy. All right, and our brake lines, um, this one should go to the tail as well actually. Uh, our brake lines from the toggles will be bowed behind the canopy like this, and they'll be dragging, all right? So what we need to assess is how long are those brake lines when our hands are all the way up on full drive and those lines are dragging behind us as we start to pull our hands down, those lines are going to go from being bent to tight. Yeah, so they'll end up going from that shape into a straight line. All right, and while they're going from taut to straight, uh, to, from slack to taut, it's not doing anything to the parachute. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's not changing the shape of the parachute at all, so there's no flare. So how far do we need to pull down until the flare starts? Okay. And at that point the flare starts, then we can do a full flare. All right. So on a canopy where those brake lines are really short, so let's say when we put our hands up on full drive, all right, they're only dragging behind a tiny bit. As soon as we start to pull our hands down, it's going to start the flare. But it also means that when we go full flare, we're, we're distorting the back of the canopy more, all right? which could mean what? That's strong. Right, maybe hot and more likely to stall. Yeah. Right? The flip side of that is if these brake lines are really long, all right, and we've got to pull down a long way until they engage, means when we full flare, might not be a very powerful flare. Yeah. Yeah, because they're not pulling down on the parachute very much. Cool. So that's the first thing to check. All right. From there, we're going to make sure that our parachute doesn't stall. Yeah. All right. So what we, what we can do there, find out where your flare starts, then you're going to pull a full flare and you're just going to hold it. Hold it there as long as you can. Do a big lean to the left and a lean to the right. And see if it'll stall. All right. If it does, then you know that you need to then do your practice flares and know where that point is so that we finish our flare just above that stall point. Yeah. All right. If you can't flare it, wrap your hands around the lines and try again. All right. So you want to find that point where it stalls. And if, when it's stalling, it's going to feel like the canopy goes really mushy. All right. And then it'll start to get a bit wobbly and then it'll start to collapse. All right and slowly let the toggles back up again. Yeah. Right. Most canopies you can't stall in a full flare, but it's really important to know the worst place to find that your canopy is gonna stall is when you're coming to land. All right, cool. So we'll check our brake line lengths. Um, then we'll find the stall point. All right, and from there, we're gonna do lots of pra practice landing flares. All right, so don't just do your two practice flares once it's open and be like, yeah, cool, she flares. All right, do the ones you're gonna do on the ground. Half flare, full flare. Yeah, fun one on the ground to film your landings. Yeah. yeah. It's a cool memory for you, getting on a rig for the first time. Yeah. Um, but a really cool debriefing tool as well. Yeah. Um, cool. So we tick all those ones. Yeah, that'll be fun. See? Yo.